Analysis of the Yellow Palm by Robert Minhinick for the AQA GCSE Literature Exam. The Yellow Palm. As I made my way down Palestine Street, I watched a funeral pass, all the women waving lilac stems around a coffin made of glass, and the face of the man who lay within, who had breathed of poison gas. As I made my way down Palestine Street, I heard the call to prayer, and I stopped at the door of the Golden Mosque to watch the faithful there. But there was blood on the walls, and the muezzin's eyes were wild with his despair. As I made my way down Palestine Street, I met two blind beggars, and into their hands I pressed my hands with a hundred black dinars, and their salutes were those of the Imperial Guard in the mother of all wars. As I made my way down Palestine Street, I smelled the wide Tigris, the river smell that lifts the air in a city such as this, but down on my head fell the barbarian sun that knows no armistice. As I made my way down Palestine Street, I saw a cruise missile, a slow and silver caravan on its slow and silver mile, and a beggar child turned up his face and blessed it with a smile. As I made my way down Palestine Street, under the yellow palms, I saw the branches hung with yellow dates, all sweeter than salams, and when that same child reached up to touch, the fruit fell in his arms. Okay, so we're anal analysing this poem with the flirts, uh, going through the flirts, form, language, imagery, rhythm, rhyme, tone, and subject, starting back to front. We're going to work out subject first, work out what the poem is about before we go any further. So I think that in general terms, this poem is reflecting how war and conflict can uh, destroy, disrupt, and change the lives of ordinary people. Of course, conflict changes the lives of all people that uh, it affects directly and indirectly um, however this poem is particularly focusing on the the uh, the day-to-day -day lives of ordinary men and women um, that have been changed by conflict um, in specific terms this is a poem that is set in Palestine Street in Baghdad which is the capital of Iraq and it is set just after the first Gulf War um, which was in 1991 when Iraq um, under the leadership of Saddam Hussein, uh, invaded Kuwait and um, the British and American forces um, went to war with Iraq in order to resolve this conflict. Now, form. Now, we're not just going to be looking at the structure of uh, the poem when we're looking at form, we are actually looking at the form because this poem is written as a ballad. You should be familiar with um, ballads. I'm sure that you've studied ballads like The Highwayman, um, Pied Piper of Hamelin, um, the Ballad of Frankie and Johnny uh, in years 7, 8 and 9 and so forth. Um, now, if you're not familiar with a ballad, a ballad is a poem that tells a story. Um, they will normally have a uniform rhythm and they will have a rhyme scheme. And they will always have a refrain. A refrain is um, a line, a phrase, um, maybe even a stanza that is repeated throughout the poem um, to try and make a, um, a point or to capture the, t the, the tone, the essence of the overall poem. The, in this case, in the yellow palm, the refrain comes at the start of each stanza, as I made my way down Palestine Street. So, the poet has chosen the ballad form because he wants to tell a story. This whole poem is about telling the story of those people, the ordinary people of Baghdad, and how they have been affected. The tight structure of the ballad form contrasts with the, the chaos uh, and the disruption that the city has been left in. By starting the each stanza with the refrain, As I made my way down Palestine Street, it sounds quite normal. It sounds mundane. It sounds like we could be talking about anywhere. But the the poem continually points out that what's happening there is is extraordinary. Uh, that death and destruction are all around, and these aren't normal living conditions, or, or not what we would consider uh, normal. But they have become part of the uh, the normality of life. With the language, now I've picked out these three quotations and um, I'm going to say 
uh, we're going to analyze this. Now that's not to say this is the only thing you can talk about the language. Remember when we look at language, we're looking at the particular words that have been chosen and the, and the vocabulary and the different effects and connotations that they might have. Well here we've got I watched, I heard and I met. The language is simple and it is direct. It's quite plain, straightforward, a bit like Mamet would, unambiguous. And you see in those three quotations, but throughout, in every single stanza, we have the repetition of the personal pronoun, I. Now, the language is straightforward, and I think that this is because the poet is, is being respectful to uh, the, uh, the people of Baghdad and the images uh, that he's trying to, to portray. Um, he's, he's not uh, flowering up his language, so to speak. He's not being overly poetic uh, um, to, you know, he wants to portray uh, the events in, in quite a blunt way um, as the people on the streets of Baghdad on Palestine Street are seeing them. He wants to see, describe the city exactly as he has seen it. By repeating I, the personal pronoun, it places the voice of the poem squarely uh, in Palestine Street. We see that uh, the voice of the poem has become an observer. And because of this repetition, or through this repetition, there is a sense of an Im immediacy, that almost as if these, these events are happening um, as we are reading. And as we read through, um, we, the reader, share this role of observer. Now, there's lots of imagery in this poem. The yellow palm, the golden moth, yellow dates, coffin made of glass, blood on the walls. We see with the yellow palm, the golden mosque, and the yellow dates, there's lots of exotic and colourful and vibrant images uh, in the poem. We also see with the coffin made of glass, I mean, even th thinking about that as a, a glass coffin, showing that death is clearly visible, and the blood on the walls, the blood on the walls contrasting, but, you know, bl uh, the bright red of blood and, and the gold of the moss, vibrant colours, and they're contrasting there, um, because it's not, you know, uh, th there's a, a real conflict in between in, in, in the blood being on the walls of this uh, of this place of worship of this place of religion. We continue the two blind beggars whose salutes were those of the imperial guard, and then the, uh, the cruise missile that is blessed by the beggar child with a smile. Images in the poem are juxtaposed. In other words, they are placed together, they are placed side by side or close together, um, and uh, juxtaposition can often put images together to complement, or in this case, to contrast. So the exotic, vibrant images contrasts with the, the destruction, the, co the chaos, the conflict, and the ruin of Palestine Street. Uh, there's a lot of uh, contrast, and you'll see that as we go through, we keep on repeating that word, but um, Robert Meninick is doing that on purpose, um, because the contrast within the poem uh, highlights, it, well, in a, in, a, in a sense, contrast is a conflict. So by using contrast as a poetic technique, he is highlighting the conflict and the tensions in Iraq. As I said, the glass coffin means that death is clearly visible and we have a reminder of death uh, throughout the poem and it's become a part of everyday life the blood on the walls contrasts with the the golden mosque uh, a, a place of hope and faith of worship um, however it also has been damaged by the war now the beggars these beggars were former Imperial Guards, and a similar technique to Wilfred, uh, Wilfred Owen in Dulce et Decorum S, which starts off with uh, an image of soldiers that are like beggars under sacks. Um, and the poet Me uh, Robert Minhinik is showing how war has, has destroyed them. They were former Imperial Guards, which would have been a, an, an important uh, status in society, one of the most important statuses. 
in or one of the most important people in society is as high as they could uh, go and now they are begging on the streets because of the uh, the effect of war and their desperation now this is a strange image the child smiling at a cruise missile an implement of war a weapon that will bring about destruction wherever it uh, uh, eventually lands and the child is smiling at it perhaps this is suggesting that a sense of normality that the child is so used to seeing these um, perhaps it's a smile of sadness but it is blessed with a smile which uh, um, su suggests something other than than sadness um, war has become as I've said part of everyday life however the human spirit can survive and I think that the, that the child is blessing with the smile shows the strength of the human spirit. Uh, rhythm and rhyme. Now I've given you some quotes here. Uh, the rhyming words pass, glass, gas. Gas obviously is a half rhyme of glass and pass. Um, uh, prayer there and despair. Now, there is no formal rhythmic structure. So if you look at each stanza and you were to count the syllables of each line, you would see that there, there's not that uniformity um, that you might expect um, in a ballad or a sonnet. Or, um, but there still is a, there is a pattern. There is an informal pattern, if you will. There is, however, a strong and uniform rhyme scheme. Go through and you will see that the first, third and last line of each stanza, sorry, the second, fourth and last line of each stanza rhymes. So, um, in spite of there being no formal rhythmic pattern, we still get a sense of a rhythm to each stanza. As I made my way down Palestine Street, I watched a funeral pass, all the women waving lilac stems around a coffin made of glass, and the face of the man who lay within, who had breathed a poison gas. Uh, this rhythm is, is, is light in pace almost, it's kind of uh, jovial in a way, and again this contrasts with the subject matter it is portraying. Also, uh, it further uh, reflects the determination of the, the ordinary people that have been left behind, um, or even it's um, reflecting the sense of hope. Now the rhyme scheme, uh, the words that are, are rhymed, it shows uh, links between them. And we can see um, in the second stanza, prayer. Now prayer is something that should give, uh, should suggest hope. Um, however, the poet is rhyming it with despair, which is an antonym of hope. It, um, um, and the beggars, as you can see, are linked with wars. And now we've used the beggars as, a, a, as an image um, with their salutes um, of the Imperial Guard. Linking the beggars with wars is, is, is making it clear that they are beggars because of the war. Now the tone, the mood, the atmosphere, and the quotes I've given you, blood on the walls, we've used that earlier, barbarian sun, sweeter than salams, and the fruit fell in his arms. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that the poem is bleak, it's quite matter of fact, it's quite blunt, it's quite straightforward, it's quite uh, um, mundane, um, innocuous, um, and that everything is normal, but the, the, the events that it is portraying, it, well if that, was, uh, if that had become normal um, for me, you know, that would suggest um, uh, despair for me, and, and the, the, the poem is bleak, it, it, uh, certainly in the first four stanzas we get no sense of, uh, of hope at all. However, in the final two stanzas, I think with the child be a blessing the, uh, the cruise missile with a smile and then the fruit falling in the arm, I do think there are, there are suggestions of hope. So going over that, um, we can see the matter-of-fact language presenting images of destruction. It is a bit unsettling and um, it, it doesn't give us much hope uh, for those people that are in um, and that are living their lives in, in, in Baghdad at this time or that's not um, how it's been presented anyway um, even the sun the, the sun as an image um, should suggest hope new dawn new beginning etc the, the sun provides life but 
it's described as being barbarian so it's oppressive and it knows no armistice again that language of of, of war uh, and the mosque again a place of hope of faith of worship um, of spirituality of comfort and yet even that is covered with blood however as I said the final two stanzas I think with their images of smiles and the, the fruit um, and the, the, the beggar child I do believe that the poet is providing us with a, a, a view of the future and a suggestion that there is hope for Iraq the um, the fruit the new life that is being born on the trees it, um, is sweeter than salams salams meaning peace um, and the child reaching up and the, and the fruit falls in his arms um, again giving a suggestion of hope 